Hi, welcome to another video. So, Moonshot AI has launched their new reasoning variant of the Kimi K2 model. Previously, Kimi K2 existed, but there was no reasoning variant of that model. However, they have now trained a reasoning variant of the model, allowing it to do complex tasks and stuff like that. They were very kind to reach out to me and give me credits to run my benchmarks because apparently, under their Twitter announcement, one of the most liked and viewed posts was about people asking for my benchmark results. So, I did just that. Let me just go through the details of this model first, and then we'll get to my benchmarks. So, they say that built as a thinking agent, it reasons step by step while using tools, achieving state-of-the-art performance on humanity's last exam, browse comp, and other benchmarks, with major gains in reasoning, agentic search, coding, writing, and general capabilities. They also say that Kimi K2 thinking can execute up to 200 to 300 sequential tool calls without human interference, reasoning coherently across hundreds of steps to solve complex problems. They also mention that while reasoning and actively using a diverse set of tools, K2 thinking is capable of planning, reasoning, executing, and adapting across hundreds of steps to tackle some of the most challenging academic and analytical problems. In one instance, it successfully solved a PhD-level mathematics problem through 23 interleaved reasoning and tool calls, exemplifying its capacity for deep, structured reasoning, and long-horizon problem-solving. There are also many benchmarks where it is state-of-the-art, even beating closed-source alternatives, which is a big win. Now, let's talk about my benchmarks. I have tested it on both non-agentic and agentic benchmarks. So, let's start. In non-agentic, the first question is about a floor plan, and it doesn't really work. The screen just stays white, and I retried the prompts, but it kept messing things up, and it just wasn't working. The SVG Panda with a burger is also not very good. It looks kind of bad, and just isn't what you'd want. Then we got the Pokeball in 3JS. This looks kind of fine. The button has the black line passing through, which shouldn't happen, but it's there. So, it's not perfect, but it's fine and a solid generation. Then we got the chess game, and it works well. The moves are always legal. The UI is not the best, but it works, and the functionality is there. So, this is a pass. Then we got Minecraft in Kandinsky style, and this works really well. The trees are not very correctly placed. Like, the branches are in the air, and there's no jumping mechanics and stuff. But this is also solid. Then we got a butterfly flying in the garden simulation, and it is also pretty good. It's really solid. I would have liked more nature stuff in the generation, but it's pretty bland. The CLI tool in Rust works kind of well, and the Blender script just straight up has wrong syntax. I thought that it would nail the math questions, but it doesn't do that either. Both math questions are a fail, unfortunately, for this. The riddle is pretty simple, and it passes that. Now, this makes it score the 13th position, which is not bad. It's slightly above Minimax, but I wouldn't say that it is as great as Minimax in plain coding, as Minimax is quite better and faster. However, Kimi seems a strong contender to something like GPT-5 for replacing my planning model, as it is a 1 trillion parameter model with a ton of refined knowledge about how to plan correctly. So, it might be a great alternative for me. Anyway, it's not the best in raw horsepower, but how does it do in the agentic tests? Well, let's have a look. I'd like to clarify that I didn't use Kimi CLI for the testing. This is because Kimi CLI is super bugged, at least with this new model. After like 10 or 15 turns, it just errors out and throws me out of the CLI. 
So I used Claude Code for it because their new model also uses interleaved thinking and Claude Code has the implementation for it. To start, we have the Movie Tracker app and it is a very buggy implementation. There's one page and navigating to others gives errors. I asked it to fix these errors, but they just kept popping up and I didn't want to give it any kind of special treatment by providing feedback, as I generally try to keep the benchmarks one shot, with maybe a fix for a small bug that is not as relevant. So, this is not great and not very usable. Then we got the Godo FPS shooter game, and well, it is also not great. At first, it straight up didn't work. Then I provided it the errors, and it fixed the step counter. But the life bar shows up, and it isn't affected after jumping, as I had asked. Then we got Svelte, and it's just a bunch of syntax errors. It just doesn't work. Nuxt is also the same story, and the Tari app is also the same story. One thing that it nailed is the Go TUI calculator. That looks good, is aligned correctly, and works. The open code repo question where I asked it to add an SVG generation command, is also a fail. This makes it score the tenth position on the leaderboard. It's not bad. You get a very similar performance footprint to GPT-5 codecs in my tests. I use GPT-5 codecs a lot for planning. It's the best model for debugging and planning, and from my initial testing, it seems that I can use Kimi to replace GPT-5 codex as my planning model. Bigger models have their own upsides. They are great at debugging, as they are trained to understand what a ton of errors mean and how to fix them. They are generally quick. Kimi is great at writing as well for the same reason. I generally like Kimi models to talk to, and I can surely daily drive this as my regular chat model. I was using GPT-5 as my regular chat model. So this seems a good option for planning, debugging, and just chatting. It's not the best coding model for me, and I can't recommend you to daily drive this. I also want to talk about the pricing. The slower API costs 60 cents for input and $2.50 for output, while the turbo variant costs $1.15 and $8 respectively. The regular slow API currently is almost unusable. It takes a lot of time to get anything done. It's extremely slow. The turbo variant is pretty snappy, and that is what I used to test it as well. It's perfectly usable, but the price is really high, and recommending that gets hard for me. So yeah, it's not a model that I can confidently recommend, but I'll check it out in planning and report back my results as well. That is majorly about it. Overall, it's pretty cool. Anyway, share your thoughts below and subscribe to the channel. You can also donate via Super Thanks option or join the channel as well and get some perks. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.